Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, we're delighted to have you here. It's a big occasion for us. In addition to the Reagan National Defense Forum, we've had Air Force One for eight years. Millions of Americans have been able to walk through that and see what it's like to be in the flying White House. And today we're going to open Marine One and people will be able to walk through that and see what it's like to be in the presidential helicopter. Three secretaries of defense could. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we need a defense guy. Yeah. Right. We need a defense guy. Yeah. <laughs> better cut it. All right. In this video podcast, we take a look at Marine One. As President Reagan's Marine One helicopters are still being used as Navy VIP transports, the helicopter I stand next to now, inside the Reagan Library's Air Force One Pavilion, is a President Johnson era Marine One helicopter. Tail number 150611. This particular Sikorsky helicopter was delivered to the United States Army on February 28, 1962. Originally designated as an HSS 2Z Sea King, it was later outfitted for executive transport duty and was redesignated a VH 3A in November of 1962. In 1967, this helicopter was assigned to the Marine Helicopter Squadron Executive Flight Detachment Fleet known as HMX-1, where it served off and on through August 1976, most notably during the Johnson administration. It was this helicopter that flew President Johnson from Andrews Air Force Base to the White House when he arrived from Texas in Air Force One 26,000 with President Kennedy's casket. When Air Force One landed, President Kennedy's casket was removed from the plane and taken away by ambulance. President Johnson exited Air Force One and gave a short press conference before boarding the helicopter. This is a sad time for all people. This helicopter later became a Navy VIP transport and was retired in 2004 and delivered to the Reagan Library in March of that year. Since the opening of the Air Force One Pavilion in October of 2005, the inside of Marine One has always been closed to guests. About a year ago, the Reagan Foundation set out to renovate the interior of the helicopter so guests can tour through it, just as they do Air Force One. I joined the Navy in 1985, and obviously Ronald Reagan was the president. Uh, when I went through all my first initial training and was young, energetic, and dynamic, he was the voice of our nation. And I was very proud to enlist, and not only enlist under him, but also serve under him. I'm currently the maintenance master chief of HSC-15, uh, the Red Lions, where a uh, helicopter squadron attached on board the USS Carl Vinson. And we had time in our schedule to come up here and volunteer and assist with your restoration. Primarily what we were looking at was the aircraft's current state and condition internally. Externally, she's in great shape. It's pristine. Uh, internally, uh, we removed the fuel cells, the fuel systems, all the fuel lines, and then we deserviced all the uh, main gearbox and the intermediate gearbox and all the hydraulic systems. Part about the restoration is I wanted to infuse a, a sense of history. Uh, I'm big on uh, customs and traditions and history is a major part of it. I brought six young sailors with me who have never worked on the Sea King, but they currently work on other helicopters in the Navy. Uh, and to partake in something that is a once in a lifetime chance, uh, they were all excited. A huge thank you to the Red Lions for their hard work. Thanks to them, our Marine One helicopter is now open for touring. I can't resist telling you a little story that I've just told the Marine Guard at the embassy. The story has to do with saluting. I was a second lieutenant of horse cavalry back in World War II days. As I told the Admiral, I wound up flying a desk for the Army Air Force. And uh, so I know all the rules about not saluting in civilian clothes and so forth and when you should or shouldn't, but then when I got this job, <laughs> and I would be approaching Air Force One or Marine One and those Marines would come to a salute, I, knowing that I'm in civilian clothes, I would nod and say hello and think they would drop their hand, and they wouldn't, they just stood there. So one night over at the Commandant's quarters, Marine Commandant's quarters in Washington, and I was getting a couple of highballs and I didn't know what to do. So I, I said to the Commandant, I said, look, I know all the rules about saluting and civilian clothes and all, but if I'm the Commander-in-Chief, there ought to be a regulation that would permit me to return a salute. And I heard some words of wisdom. He said, I think if you did, no one would say anything. <laughs> so. Thank 
Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this Inside the Reagan Library video. See you soon.